Basketball gotcha. has literally always been my one sport. Um, it's been it's been the best for me. Like again, it's it's taken my family places. It's my mom and I got to go to Paris when I was sixteen for a tournament. Um, I, my mom got to see the Eiffel Tower, and that lady that lady rounded that corner and started crying. And I was like, "Girl, you are crazy!" But here we are. <laughs> you know, and I was happy to give her that experience. She's come to visit me in Turkey, um, and it's just one of those things where it's it's literally the gift that keeps on giving. Um, you know, when I finally was drafted and Laura Richie said, and with the fifth pick, the New York Liberty take Kelsey Bone or whatever she said, um, you know, the pride and the joy and the, the, the sigh of relief that my mother let out at that table, it made it all worth it. And then a couple months later, I graduated from college. Um, and, Debt free, you know when y'all when y'all be worried about Joe Biden canceling all that debt, I cannot relate. Oh, don't and get us started. Well, yeah. we, we can, we can. Like, we can. Like, as soon as I graduated, all my friends started talking about Sally Mae, and I was like, "Who is that, What's Sally Mae? Who is?" That? Oh, and I was like, "Oh, oh please, yeah. mom, please, you're making you're making you're us sad." Please, you're making us sad. <laughs> I've been relating with you this whole time and now until that point. Until that point. But you know, it's just been it's just been the gift that um it has. It's just it's just it keeps on giving. And you know, you guys keep saying how real I am. And honestly, it's because of my mom. Like my mom just always Mm -hmm. preached to me to show up as my true and authentic self. And don't be a liar. Mm -hmm. Like say what you want to say as long as you're telling the truth. Mm -hmm. The minute you start lying. Then we got to talk about something else because it's kind of looking a little funny in the light. Um, and so for mm-hmm. me, I, I, I it, it gets me into trouble a lot of times because like I'm just gonna say it. I don't know yeah. what we uh, what we doing because we all grown. Can't nobody whoop me. No, well, somebody can, <laughs> but she not. She not but no you know more. She don't. She, 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 she exactly. not. No <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's one of those things mm-hmm. where it's just yeah. been. It's just been a, a rewarding journey, and I'm excited. You know, people ask me all the time, how much longer do you think you'll play? I have no idea. I, I really and truly don't. I thought two years ago I would never play basketball again, and here I am playing the best basketball of my life right now. That was that was the, that was was the really the point in life where I was like, you know what? I want to be a pro. And whatever it takes for me to get to that point, that's what I'm going to do so that I can be a pro. And it all paid off. It did. It paid off. It wasn't, my journey hasn't been the easiest. Um, you know, I've, I've had coaches, I had a coach tell me when I first started playing, she told my mom straight up, you need to find something else for her to do. Um, and my mom, you know, my mom was like, I've seen my mom, like when I first started playing, I could barely make a right-handed leg. And People wow. would laugh. They would sit, parents would sit in the stands and laugh. And I, I, I distinctly remember a game where I looked into the stands and my mom just had this tear. And I was like, oh, all right, man. I got to figure this out because I can't have my mom in the stands crying like this, <laughs> being embarrassed. And so for me, yeah. my journey has. It's been, it's been hard, um, but, but a good hard. It, it's just work. Mm-hmm. And it's one thing that I, I'll never shy away from the work of anything because I've, I've had to do that my whole life. I did not, I was born big, but I was not born a basketball player. I had to figure that (laughs) part out a little bit. And Mm -hmm. honestly, you know, when at like eight, I hit this growth spurt and my mom was like, um, my mom was the major ed sponsor at her school at the time. And like up until this point, I was going to be a dancer. I was going to be a twirler. (laughs) I was going to be any kind of thing, but uh, I was not playing no sports. That's for sure. And mm-hmm. I started growing, and my mom was like, "Yeah, oh. um, <laughs> we don't have to. She got the girls I never Yeah, we're gonna have to figure something else out. You gonna have to. Mm-hmm. Mm, mm, this dancing not gonna be it. Mm-mm. And at the time, <laughs> I was also a cheerleader, and her big thing was like, "I'm not coming to football games and watching you be at the bottom of the pyramid. That's just not gonna happen." <laughs> so I was like, you mess everything up. You literally mess everything up. If I have to just put love a little bit, it's okay. It's okay, mom. It's okay. And she was not having it. 
So oh. her and my stepdad, like I wasn't doing anything outside in Texas as he that wasn't happening. Oh, so no. my stepdad had been a basketball player and we 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 agreed on basketball and you know it, it took me a minute to figure it out and, and get with it and understand it. But once I did, um mm-hmm. it's been up <laughs> ten years in this. I am I can truthfully and honestly say that I have found the joy and the love for basketball. Things aren't bad things. And that's one thing that I've had to learn. Like, was it a, a loss? Not so much. It's it's actually been a lesson. And I've had to take things for what they are. Um, I'm just now at a point where, you know, people with the way I've been playing, everybody's like, well, you know, when the WBA call, if the WBA calls, will you go back? And, you know, those, that kind of chatter is starting to happen. And I'm finally at a point where the answer is yes. Call us all, all, it's fine. All the time. We call <laughs> ourselves baby old we people, are, so. We are yeah. baby old people. I mean, we're the beginning. I'm picking up those old people <laughs> habits, so. Yes, I'm, I'm definitely me. at the... I'm definitely at the stage where too much noise and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm literally with my mother and, and it, it's so like, <laughs> I talk to my mom all the time and I'm like, uh, I am really becoming you. But it's one of those things where like so much that she had going on in my childhood, it makes so much career. I really have to say that like I've been so blessed with the, with the teammates and the people that I've played with, um, mm-hmm. because it's only helped me get to this point and, and be able to do what I'm still loving and enjoying at this oh. point in my career. I think a lot of times no one grows up saying, oh, I want to play in Europe. You know, I want to play in Euro League and I want to play in Euro Cup, especially as Americans. That's not, yeah. Yeah. we all grow up saying we want to play in the WNBA. Um, and the WNBA is, our, in my opinion, the greatest women's basketball league in the world. Um, but you come over here and you find, you find out just how real basketball is in the rest of the world. I think a lot of times the one thing you don't, there's not a lot of politics. There's not a lot of, you know, this and that going on. It's literally about who's better and who's best and who can put the ball in the basket and who can play basketball. And so um, it's a it's a different speed. It's a, it's a little bit more stressful um, than the WNBA, if you ask me. Um, but it's a good stress because I'm just playing basketball. So it's not, um, you know, we're not curing cancer or performing brain surgery or doing anything like that we're still just playing basketball but it's a it's a little bit of a different speed and a different um just a different look uh and I think you know I've noticed that a lot of younger players are kind of starting to shy away from coming over here and I I it it kind of sucks if you ask me um because I do believe that there is a a level of growth that you experience when you come over mm-hmm. here that is so necessary. And I think what young players don't understand initially is that this is a business. Um, basketball at this level is a job. Uh, no one cares. You know, we always say, oh, you know, I love this game. Nobody cares about that when you get to this level. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what you don't understand is, is that as a younger player, let's say you play your WBA season and that's a summer season. Well, what are you doing the other eight months out of the year? And if you're not somewhere getting better and I don't like it, it's easy to go in the gym and train. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's great. But as young players, you have to go and play basketball and get better because what you have to understand is next year, there's a draft class that's coming in that's equal or better than you and cheaper. Mm -hmm. And a business, if you guys are, if you guys are neck and neck, and this younger player is cheaper, well, I'm going to argue that I'm going to take the cheaper player every single time because then I can go get me someone who's older and more experienced to spend a little bit more money there. And so I do understand, you know, the the new CDA has allowed, you know, more money to be made and all that stuff. But you have to be realistic and understand that after taxes, you're only bringing so much money home in your first five years in the WNBA. And when you come overseas, your money is not taxed. It's, if they say you're going to make this amount of money in a month, you are going to make that much money in a month. And mm-hmm. it's not always about the money. It's it's about the longevity of your career. It's about the learning experiences. It's about playing a different style of basketball and, and, and being able to get better. 
while, while being a pro. The hardest thing um, sometimes as a pro is to get better. And the only way you can do that sometimes as a pro is to play. I mean, you, you look at all of the greats in the past who have played overseas, and it's mm-hmm. just amazing to me that so many young kids are getting advice and information that tells them, oh, you don't need to do that. I mean, if Candace Parker had to play overseas, if Sylvia Fowles had to play overseas, if Tamika Ketchins played overseas, yeah. if Tina Thompson played overseas, if Lisa Leslie, Lauren Jackson, I mean, if mm-hmm. all of these players played overseas, pretty sure some of you do need to come over here and, and, and kind of get you, just get a little just get a little bit of it. I'm not saying you mm-hmm. have to play overseas. I'm not saying you have to... Um, you know, make a career out of it and do it for 10 years. I'm not saying anything like that, but you do absolutely need growth and you do need experience that you don't always get in the WBA for four months out of the year. And so um, it's something that I hope changes soon. I hope that, you know, well, I I know that experience is the best teacher and it, it, it takes getting cut and it takes losing your spot and losing your job to realize um, hey, well, let me go figure this out. Let me go try to see what this is about and what this is like. And so I hope it's something that, you know, changes here soon. Um, but if not, you know, whoever comes is going to come and make this money and, and that's going to be it. I've just mm-hmm. been excited mm-hmm. to still have an opportunity. I, I found a text message in my phone from my brother um, after when I was going going to Israel the first time after not playing for two years. And, you know, he was just like, he's, he's my biggest fan, but he's also my biggest hater. You gotta, you gotta kind of be careful with my brother sometimes. Yes, I love brother him death. Um, because, yeah. you know, the competition, the sibling robbery, we're 10 years apart. So like the, the sibling robbery gets real, it gets real, real deep. I don't know what my mama was thinking, mm-hmm. but that's another conversation for today. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, you know, he just told me like, you got to go th- take this opportunity. Not too many people get second chances. Um, and that's something that has just stuck out to me and that has resonated with me so very strongly because I I was given a second chance to play this game at the highest level. Um, and in a, in, a, in a moment, in a situation where I thought... Um, I would never play again. Um, here I am. Um, I'm. I'm. I shocked myself. Like the day I scored fifty two, I'm not even gonna hold y'all. <laughs> I looked up. I was. I was in awe of myself. Like I've shocked myself a little bit here lately. Um, but mm-hmm. I've also especially that mind. second half. Like oh, oh my, my god. Because we were like, yeah. so okay. we were waiting for you yeah. to go off because we knew how many. We were like, wait, she hasn't scored that yeah. much this half. Like, what like, is it happening? It was ten- Boom! <laughs> it was like, and like, no it's crazy way. because like. I was sick. I they had like been. I had been in the hospital. They had been IVing me what? up, and it was like my coach at practice that day was like the day before the game. She was like, "Are you gonna be okay?" And I was like. You ever heard of the Michael Jordan flu game? I knew and she you were gonna say that. I knew they were all, <laughs> they were all looking at me like I was crazy, and I was like, "Just watch." But like, I was in boom. Okay, so wow. Was wow. That was like, not fire. in the cards. That was not in the cards. But you were on fire. Again. <laughs> Dang. Dang. Um, but again, that is like, crazy. Again. It's the Michael Jordan game. My gosh. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, it's just been one of those things where the past, the past few weeks, and again, like, I'm on a team that, you know, it's crazy what you can do when people appreciate you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in a place okay. where people appreciate you and they, they welcome what you bring to the table. Um, and I, I could not do any of this without this group that I'm with, without my coaches. Um, without my teammates, um, it's just been, it's been a really great start for my 10th year. Um, and you know, for somebody who was so anti coming back to Turkey, I'm really glad that I've come back and I've been able to perform on, on the, at the level in which I'm performing here. There needs to be a push for more former players, um, to be involved, um, because, 
You only know what's wrong when you've walked this walk. You you only know what can be made better when you've been a part of what's wrong. Um, and so I think looking at it from a business standpoint is one way, is a great way to grow the game and all of that stuff. But you also have to take care of your players. You also have to, um, I mean, for the longest, we were walking around with tape on our shoes. Like, be for real. Like, mm-hmm. Come on now. See, come on now. Like, you know, like, actually, like, in, in a regular in a regular scenario, that makes perfect sense. Obviously, you take care of your players, but we're you know where we're at. Mm-hmm. This is the league's mm-hmm. not in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'd mm-hmm. rather pay for the arena and stuff than your shoes or charters. They'd rather do maintenance to you know give somebody else a sponsorship or whatever they're doing with the refs. Like, they're, they're spending this money what however is. they want to do it. But I still think the rest would do it for free. But the yeah. point is, Come on. And here's the thing. A lot of everybody's <laughs> like, give Canada a team. The WA needs a team in Canada. They didn't want it. Y'all think somebody flew a commercial that took to, to anywhere in Canada? Mm-hmm. Like, we if we can't charter around our own country, mm-hmm. y'all want us to go across the border? And it's getting dangerous. Is there something? It's it, people have guns. It's getting dangerous just to Everywhere. travel a lot and be black and noticeable and visible. It's getting mm-hmm. dangerous. I, I would yeah. I would argue like look at the the BG situation in the airport. Mm-hmm. No kidding. Exactly. Like, yeah. Y'all did nobody thought through that. No. Mm, no. You know some some stuff might somebody might say something mm-hmm. or there might be some kind of issue. Like no way you guys thought that that would just go after all of the rhetoric around that situation for all of those months. Y'all didn't think somebody was going to want notice her. It's not a lot of resources. You're, you're really kind of on your own. It's not like you have, I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to have some really good vets that I could reach out to who could talk me through some things. And I've, I've tried to make sure that I am that to this younger generation um, mm-hmm. because if not for them, I don't know that I'm still playing basketball. If not for my mom, if not for my girlfriend, my family, I'm not sure where I would be without my support system. And so for me now, mm-hmm. there I've, I've gotten to a point where I could quiet the outside noise. It's really just about me and my job and, and what it is that I've always dreamed of doing because they're not everybody is lucky enough to, to have their dream job. Like not everybody's doing what they mm-hmm. wanted to do when they were not. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, you're gonna be okay. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and I, I think one thing that I've always been a little critical of the league about is who they choose to be the commit. Um I think when you look back over the last couple of women that they've brought in, they're all business women. You have the lady who ran Girl Scouts. You have the lady who was working for Coke. And now you have Kathy who was at Deloitte. And it's like, yes, okay, okay, on the business side. But who's still reminding everybody that this is a sport? Who's still reminding everybody that at the end of the day, um, we're playing basketball? Um, and I think so, so many times we get caught up trying to market to men because it's a sport. Um, but you market to who comes, you know, you market to, to who, who's there. And I think it's one of those things where there's a lot of change, um, and there's a lot of good things happening, but there are also, I mean, Elizabeth Williams is on the floor. She was a rookie. Um, (laughs) um, you know, like. (laughs) <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that could be better um, but they also come with growth um, and so hopefully as we grow we don't continue to lose sight of the point I guess so to speak we don't we don't lose sight of the main thing um, mm-hmm. and so it's been I mean just from this is in 2015. So just in that amount of time, you know, you still have so many of these players still playing in the WNBA. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 just crazy to see just the difference in what this game looks like and what a WNBA game looks like now. My favorite young players in the league right now. Yeah. Um, okay, so as a post player, I'm a little bit biased, but I'm a big okay. Aaliyah Boston fan. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Big, big, You're popular with this room, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, big fan of hers. Um, I am a big Zaya Cook fan. Um, okay. <clears throat> and she's one that I, I, I know she's not going to come overseas. Uh, or mm-hmm. she said that she's not, but she's one that I wish she would. Um, just to hone her game in a little bit and just to understand and learn um, some different things. Uh, just that she won't, they don't They don't have the time to teach in the WBA. The, the WBA is not a learning league. It's not a teaching league. It's a playing league. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, let me see, who else am I a fan of? Hey, Kelsey, go. Um, are the Atlanta dreaming? Um, so maybe one don't, don't start. Oh, Lisa, look. Okay. She, don't Ryan, start. Ryan, Ryan Howard is the real deal. Okay. She, oh, oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Ryan, Ryan Howard is a walking, living bucket. Oh, oh my goodness. Amen. Um, I Amen. am a big um, Dana Evans fan. Okay. I call her Tasha St. Patrick because she looks Listen. like Tasha St. Patrick. Obviously, she looks like Natasha. <laughs> but I am a huge Man. Dana Evans. And like, let me tell you something. Who who comes over here and gets right to it is that day. Yeah. Um, I was so proud and so happy for Asia um, because yes. she, she, she shouldn't have lost it to Brianna Stewart. Let me just say that. You can mm-hmm. argue what you want about mm-hmm. her, between her and Alyssa. Um, the, the but bench outshot, right? The bench. Yeah. No, yes. like I mean, it's, I, it's one of those things where, and I'll say this: it's a part of me as a player. I felt bad for Stewie, um, because mm-hmm. Stewie yeah. did not expect social media to turn on her in the manner in which it did because she mm-hmm. won. Um, and because of that, I do believe that that's why. That's what was wrong with her in the playoffs. Like, it, it when you're public enemy number one, <laughs> if you've never been that, when you're so used to being the, the darling mm-hmm. and the golden child and uh, and everybody being on your side, um, you know when you when they allow you to be the president of the social justice committee and all of these things, and now it's like, wait, wait. Yes, that was a thing. Never mind. Yeah, was, Never mind. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Let's just keep what going. in the bubble? What? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I forgot about that, but absolutely, I didn't. you know, Malcolm X said the most disrespected person on earth is the black woman, and I'm now. all for black women no longer taking this shit laying down. Sorry, exactly. hey, no, you're whatever. fine. Hey, no, I'm all for the, I'm all for Sydney and I grew Sydney Colson and I grew up together, so I've known that no. nut for a very no. very long time. <laughs> we love Sydney. We watch her show every her. week. <laughs> I'm all for her coming out and saying everything that she's saying. Night night, because here's the thing. She said it, she tweeted yesterday and said like it was it wasn't classless when Sabrina did it in game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. That's different. But the exactly. fact that I but the fact that we were able to give that back to her, well now we're classless mm-hmm. and we're this and we're that. And I mean, you know, like it's all losing sports, but nobody. It wasn't classless when the Liberty didn't show up to the press conference after the game. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. I mean, you know what I mean. Like it, it's one of those things where it's just like people don't people don't want black girls and black women to be able to say no. I'm not taking that laying down. I'm not. I'm not doing it this way. I'm not doing it that way. And so. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, we're we're gonna if you if you can dish it, you gotta be able to take it. And if you exactly. can, well then Ooh. don't dish it forward to uh-huh. as they take this next step. Um, because at the end of the day, they're gonna be the face. I mean, if you think you're gonna you're gonna backseat Angel Reese when she gets to the WNBA, you're crazy. Angel Reese is a household name. Already, yeah. and yeah. she's she could stay in college for two more years. And so, if you think you're gonna say, Well, Paige, this and Caitlin, that and this person, this or that person, that it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen because we see it, we've already we've already witnessed 
what social media can do. And so then you're going to kind of start pimping your hand a little bit and people are going to start saying, now, what, now, now, just what is going on here? Mm-hmm. Yep. And I've always said, like, it's, it's no reason that with the girls with the lashes and the hair and all, like, there's some there's some ch- some channels and some lanes for some marketing and some sponsorship, Absolutely. but like somebody no has to to do that. Like, I mean, for example, like Kotex and Tampon. Like, why are those not sponsors for the WBA? I never understand. How? how not even, we don't even have diva cups. We could have diva like, cups. Something, like anything, like anything, Come on. like there are so many things that are just for women that we don't like league sponsorship. Like mm-hmm. yep. there are so many things that like, and I just always have wondered, like, whose job is that? 